Well, Gary, it felt like just yesterday that we were uh, reviewing season 2015 and yet here we are already at the commencement of the 2016 pre-season and we thought we'd take the opportunity today to catch up with you to discuss a few things happening around the club as we reach that point. Uh, so first of all, how's the off-season period been so far for yourself and the club? Yeah, it's gone pretty quickly, Sam, as you said, and it's just been really, really busy. We've contacted, we've obviously interviewed, we've... Uh, I don't know how many coffees I would have had in the last couple of months, mate, but I'm certainly up and about and ready to go. But it's all hard work, really, because we've got such a big network that we've got to try and work through in relation to names and the different competitions that they play out and try and get, obviously, some biogs and background on what they are doing. But also, too, we've got to prioritise what our needs are and what our list replacements are going to be. And obviously, the big thing is how we improve our list going forward for season 2016 because we're uh, still pretty disappointed about how the last year turned out so but lots of work but we're kicking some goals hopefully mate and things will progress from uh, here on in because we've now started pre-season. And so just on that first session so Monday night despite the warm weather there were good numbers in attendance which must have been pleasing first up. Yeah, there was, and look, the majority of those were really trialers who we've contacted over the uh, break, and we've got to now make a start on that. Uh, we've got to get a baseline on uh, what they can and can't do, and of course we've, on some hand, uh, or in one way, we've got to start obviously uh, deleting some particular personnel, but that just happens over a period of time, of course, and with a bit of luck, once everyone kicks off next week, we'll have a little bit more of an idea as to uh, what we've actually got to work with. But, yeah, the conditions were warm and a few of them were found out in the old beep test and uh, then with a little bit of light skills. But you've always got to make a start somewhere and, as you said, that's what we did. And more specifically, what are some of the key focus areas which yourself and the coaching staff will be focusing on throughout the pre-season? I'm assuming there will be plenty of uh, fitness-based sessions coming up before the Christmas break. Yeah, there always is, but it's actually the type of fitness that you do. You can run around the ground or do your interval running, if you want to call it that, but there's also, too, the work with the footies, and last year I didn't think in any way, shape or form we are as skilled as we should have been, so we're going to be fundamentally based on that for quite a lot of this side of Christmas anyway, and there's a lot of going through each individual and trying to get some testing data on them so we know specifically what we're going to work with. We've put Trent McMicken in as a development coach. There's going to be a pretty important job for him to do over the next 12 months at least so we can get some sort of, I guess, accountability and uh, also to just an opportunity to see where players have improved and above all that, it's about staying clear of the medical room and uh, not encountering any more injuries. So that's going to be pretty important how we go about the quality of work and the body of work that we do. And on the recruiting front, we've had two key players officially put pen to paper so far, namely uh, Jared Matheson from Baldwin and Nick Dixon, who crosses from Geelong's VFL side. Um, are you able to give the fans an insight into how things are tracking from that point of view at the moment and what types of players you're still hoping to bring in? Yeah, look, they're the two that you've mentioned and we're hoping that there might be one later on today if we can obviously work that out as well. And the types of players that we're looking at is first and foremost, we need a couple of ruckmen to get into the club and, you know, we've tried Robbie Warnock, but he looks like he's probably going to retire. We've certainly tried another guy that played uh, some state footy a couple of years ago in Michael Sikora, but he doesn't seem to be all that interested in uh, coming to Port Melbourne for whatever reason. We've got a couple of others that are in the system, but they're giving us the information that they want to wait till the draft at the end of November and then the pre-season and rookie draft. So there are some obstacles that are in our way at the minute. So Ruckman, some big bodied midfielders would be certainly right up our alley and then a little bit of speed outside run and probably a couple of key position swingmen so look they'd be on everyone's wish list but I can certainly assure the fans out there of the mighty borough that we're having a real red hot crack and if they all say yes well poor old Bazza kid might be running for the hills with his uh, money bag so he won't be able to fulfill all their salaries but better to have too many than uh, too few. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Gary, I'm sure it must be exciting to be back into the swing of things and he's hoping for a great campaign as we head into 2016. Best of luck. Yeah, good on you, Sam. Good to be back with this hard-hitting episode of the Borough TV. <laughs> <laughs>